ने कहा ओह आपका लिए प्रणाम की महिमा समस्त जगत पर कैसे रहने लगे उपेंद्र बनकर जगत का पालन करने लगे यही तो महान होता है सो कृष्ण हिंसा वमन देव हिंसा दिन भी कम देखी हूँ ही गेव द किंगडम टू होम टू इंद्रो एंड ही हिमसाउ ही बिकेम उपेंद्र एंड वॉज लाइक रूल इन द होल वर्ल्ड So Bali Maharaj also became very pleased. Sorry, Prahlad Maharaj. He became pleased that in his dynasty, Bali Maharaj came and then he sent him to Sutal Lok. So Prahlad Maharaj he did some prayers. Which verse? Kunjeshwari did which verse? Prada Maharaj told, "Hey Bhagavan, you are worshipful in the whole world. Brahma, Shiva, and others—they are always worshiping your lotus feet." This is chapter twenty-four. Twenty-six sloka. Which which chapter? Which chapter? Ah, okay. Chapter twenty-three. Okay, eighth canto, chapter twenty-three, verse six. So in one form, Bhagavan was staying in Sutta Lok. To protect the kingdom of Bali Maharaj as his like doorman, security guard. So that's why Shri Bhagwan Saraswati Prabhupada explains. Actually, we see that Bali Maharaj he didn't do what many people did. Actually, he he did not surrender. Understand? Why? Why he gave everything to Lord, but in the end he made. Bhagavan is doorman, darpal. You know, like like Lord has he gave the burden to God to take care of his of his kingdom in Sutal. Puranas explain that Bali Maharaj he had prayed to Vamana Deva, Hey Prabhu, I want okay, I'll go there, but I I want to see you in all all the directions. Means, also you also please stay here also. Just like a doorman or a security guard, they stay outside the the house. So in the same way, so he had stay like a like a doorman of Bali Maharaj in Sutal Lok. Verse seven, chapter twenty-three, eighth canto. All supreme shelter of everyone, great personalities like Brahma, enjoy their perfection simply by tasting the honey of rendering service at their lotus feet. Um, by tasting the honey of rendering service, but as for us who are all rogues and debauchees, born of an envious family of demons, how have we received your mercy? 
So we are demons. We are from the mode of ignorance. But still he gave your causeless mercy to us. We are not qualified. Text 8. Oh my Lord, your pastimes are all wonderfully performed by your inconceivable spiritual energy and by her perverted reflection, the material energy. You have created all the universes as a super soul of all living entities. You are aware of everything and therefore you are certainly equal toward everyone. Nonetheless, you favor your devotees. This is not partiality. However, for your characteristic is just like that of a desire tree, which yields everything according to one's desire. Text 9. Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear son Prahlad, all good fortune unto you. For the time being, please go to the place known as Sutal and there enjoy happiness with your grandson and your other relatives and friends. So Bhagavan told Prahlad Maharaj, You also go to Sutal Lok, Lok stay with Bali Maharaj and please your relatives and friends. The Supreme God said, You shall be able to see me there in my usual feature with conchal this club and lotus in my hand. Because of your transcendental bliss due to always personally seeing me, you will you have no further bondage to fruitive activities. So I will always stay there in Sutta Lok, Lord is saying. Text 11. Sukadeva Goswami said, Accompanied accompan, accompan, accompan <laughs> in the company of Bali Maharaj, my dear King Parikshit, Prad Maharaj, the master of all the chiefs, chiefs of, demon, of the demons, took the Supreme Lord's order on his head with folded hands. After saying yes to the Lord, circumambulating him and offering him respectful obeisances, he entered the lower planetary system known as Sutal. Hari, the Supreme Lord, Narayana, thereafter addressed Sukacharya, who was sitting nearby in the midst of the assembly with the priests Brahma, Hota, Udgata, and Advaryu. Oh, Maharaj Parikit, these priests were all Brahmavadis, followers of the Vedic principles for performing sacrifice. Oh, best of the Brahmanas, Sukracharya, please describe the fault of the, or discrepancy in your disciple Bali Maharaj, who engaged in performing sacrifices. This fault will be identified when judged in the presence of qualified Brahmanas. My Lord, you are the enjoyer and lawgiver in all performances of sacrifice, and you are the Jagapurush, the person to whom all sacrifices are offered. If one has fully satisfied you, where is the chance? 15. My Lord, you are the enjoyer and law giver in all performances of sacrifice, and you are the Jagapurush, the person to whom all sacrifices are offered. If one has fully satisfied you, where is the chance of discrepancies or faults in his performances of sacrifice? Text 16. 
There may be discrepancies, discrepancies in pronouncing the mantras and observing the re regulative principles. And moreover, there may be discrepancies in regard to time, place, person and paraphernalia. But when your Lordship's holy name is chanted, everything becomes faultless. So he is saying, when you perform fire sacrifice or any auspicious activities, sometimes you make some mistakes, some fault. Shastra explains, maybe you will not properly pronounce the mantra. or some confusion or you forget something. There may be discrepancies in pronouncing the mantras and observing the regulative principles and moreover there may be discrepancies in regard to time, place, person and paraphernalia. But when your Lordship's holy name is chanted, everything becomes faultless. So that's why Shasta explains, in the end of everything you have to chant the Maha Mantra, in the end of everything. Always. Lord Vishnu, I must nonetheless act in obedience to your order because obeying your order is most auspicious and is the first duty of everyone. Text 18. Shukadeva Goswami continued. In this way, the most powerful Shukracharya sorry, accepted the order of the Supreme Lord with full respect. Along with the best Brahmanas, he began to compensate <laughs> sorry, for the discrepancies in the sacrifices performed by Bali Maharaj. O King, thus, thus having given all the land to, of Bali Maharaj by begging, thus having taken all the land of Bali Maharaj by begging, the Supreme Lord Vamanadeva delivered to his brother Indra all the land taken away by Indra's enemy. Lord Brahma, the master of King Daksha and all other Prajapatis, are comp in the company of all the demigods, the great saintly persons, the inhabitants of Pitrilok, Manus, Munis, and ch such leaders as Daksha, Brigu, and Angira, <laughs> as well as Kartike and Lord Shiva, accept the Lord Vamanadeva as the protector of everyone. He did this for the pleasure of Kashyap Muni and his wife, Aditi, for the welfare of all the inhabitants of the universe, including their various leaders. O King Parikit, Indra was considered the king of all the universe, but the demigods headed by Lord Brahma wanted Upendra, Lord Vamandev, as the protector of the Vedas, the principles of religion, fame, opulence, auspiciousness, vows, elevation to the higher planetary systems and liberation. So Bali Maharaj told Prabhu, stay in Sutta Luka. So, later by the order of Brahma, thereafter along with the, all the leaders of the heavenly planets, Indra placed Lord Brahma De Deva before him and with the approval of Lord Brahma brought him to the heavenly planet in a celestial airplane. Indra, king of heaven, 25, being protected by the arms of Vamana Deva, the supreme god, thus regained this his rule of the three worlds and was reinstated reinstated in his own position, supremely opulent, fearless and fully satisfied. So everyone went back to their own abodes. 
O King, while chanting about and glorifying the Lord, they return to their respe respective heavenly planets. They also praise the position of Aditi. Because Aditi, she had performed that vow for 12 days, she drank only the milk, Payuvrat, and as a fruit of that, Bhagavan Vishnu himself came as her son, appeared in the form of Vamanadeva. Twenty-nine. One who is subject to death cannot measure the glories of the Supreme Lord, Devikram, Lord Vishnu, any more than he can count the number of atoms on the entire planet Earth. No one, whether born or ready or destined to take birth, is able to do this. This has been sung by the great sage Vas Vashistha. If one hears about the uncommon activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his various incarnations, he is certainly elevated to the higher planetary system or even brought back home, back to Godhead. So those who are born, And whenever the activities of Amanadeva are described in the course of a ritualistic ceremony, whether the ceremony. Be, okay, so this. If you listen to this uh, amazing Harikata of Amanadeva, you, you attain the highest destination. So, whenever the activities of Amanadeva are described in the course of a ritualistic ceremony, whether the ceremony be performed to please the demigods, to please one's forefathers in Pitrilok, or to celebrate a social event like a marriage, that ceremony should be understood to be extremely auspicious. <laughs> so what should they do? Glorify Lord. Glorify the Lord. No, chapter 24. Matsa, the Lord Fish incarnation. So now Shukadeva Goswami will tell to Parikit Maharaj about which avatar? Matsa avatar. So after the story of Bali Bamana, so now the story of Matsya. Maharaj Parakit said, The Supreme Lord Hari is eternally situated in his transcendental position. Yet he descends to this material world and manifests himself in various incarnations. His first incarnation was that of a great fish. Fish. Almost powerful Shukadeva Goswami, I wish to hear from you the pastimes of that fish incarnation. <laughs> After this first line, then Yeah. 
Isso depois de Jayadeva Goswami. He described in Dashavatara Stutra. And the Gita Govinda he explains. Who is performing these pastimes? Actually, Keshav, he is the origin of all avatars. This Keshav, he appeared in the form of a fish and he is performing pastimes. What was the purpose purpose for which the Supreme Lord accepted the ab abominable form of a fish? Exactly as an, as an ordinary living being accepts different forms under the laws of karma. In the form of a fish is certainly condemned and full of terrible pain. Oh my Lord, what was the pur purpose of this incarnation? Kindly explain this to us. For hanging about the pastimes of the Lord is auspicious for everyone. So please tell me about this pastime, how Lord came as Matsya. <laughs> Sutta Goswami said, when Parikit Maharaj thus inquired from Shukadeva Goswami that the most powerful saintly person began describing the pastimes of the Lord's incarnation as a fish. Shukadeva Goswami said, O King, for the sake of protecting the cows, brahmanas, demigods, devotees, the Vedic literature, the religious principles, and principles to fulfill the purpose of life. The Supreme God accepts the forms of incarnations. Like they are passing through different types of atmosphere, the Supreme God, although appearing sometimes as a human being and sometimes as a lower animal, is always transcendental because he is above the material modes of nature. He is unaffected by higher and lower forms. Lower forms. God is antajami. He is like super soul everywhere. A super soul everywhere. Because he is above the material modes of nature, he is unaffected by higher and lower forms. Verse 6, Chapter 24, 8th Canto. Text 7. O King Parikit, at the end of the past millennium, at the end of Brahma's day, because Lord Brahma sleeps during the night, annihilation took place, and the three worlds were covered by the water of the ocean. At the end of Brahma day, when Brahma felt sleepy and desired to lie down, the Vedas were emanating from his mouth and the great demon na named Hayagriva stole the Vedic knowledge. So who stole the Vedas? Hayagrib. One demon called Hayagrib. 
verse 9, understanding the acts of the great demon Hagrid, the supreme god Hari, who is full of all opulences, assumed the form of a fish and saved the Vedas by killing the demon. So to rescue the Vedas, Swayam Bhagavan appeared in the form of fish, on a fish. During the Chakshus Mavantar, there was a king, great king named Satavrata. So now it will describe how God appeared as Matsya and he took the Vedas. So now about the Chakshus Mavantar. How many Manus are there? 14. Fourteen Manus. So there was a king, king called Satavrat in the Chakshus Mavantar. He was always absorbed in Narayana and of, uh, worshipping Narayana. He was, would only drink water and would perform austerities. So, how in other yugas they would perform so much austerity, right? Maybe only drinking water or only drinking milk. Like, you know, Dhruva Maharaj Kata, for example. So, six months. In each, each month, he took only one thing or stopped taking another thing. Six months. And at the end of the six months, he had the darshan of Bhagavan, Dhruva Maharaj. So, in the first month, what did Dhruva do? Took only some leaves for one month. In the second month, he took what? Only some fruits. Third month, even he stopped flowers and leaves, sorry, leaves and, and fruits. Oh, sorry, I lost. So then only air. In the fifth month, even the air he stopped. And the sixth month, he became so, like his body was affected and seeing his very, like, his condition, very thin condition. Then God's, ha God's heart melted. So that's why Rupa Goswami he wrote a, a shloka, Bhajananam. I mean, this shloka of Rupa Goswami is saying, oh, how in the past these people used to do perform bhajan? In Kali Yuga is not possible a bhajan like this from the previous times. Even to follow one ekadasi, it's so difficult to follow even one ekadasi day, isn't it? Isn't it? And also the body of human beings in Kali Yuga, they have so many diseases. Like this body is a temple of disease. Actually our, our, our body is a temple of disease. You cannot even perform austerities. Cannot. So some pe person came walking from Kedar Bhadri without eating or drinking like top of Himalayas. Like some people stay only drinking water. Yeah, some saints are, until nowadays they do this kind of great austerity. It's true. It's not that it's not possible. I mean, they stay, like they only walk some for four months or going to all the pilgrimage, of, pilgrimage places of India only by foot, even nowadays like walking, walking. And he only stays drinking water. He only survives drinking water. Doesn't take anything else. There's a saint. In Kali Yuga, yes, yeah, some people also you can find like this. But for the human beings, it's not. In some exceptional case, we see this in, um, amongst human beings. But it's not for without without food. 
In Kali Yuga, the human beings cannot survive without food. Isn't it? So here he's saying So in the Chakshus Mavantar there was a king called called Satavrat. He was so absorbed in Narayana, he was only drinking water, performing austerities, only drinking water, nothing else. He was subsisting only on water. In this present millennium, King Satavrat later became the son of Viv Vaswan, the king of the sun planet, and was known as Shraddha Dev. By the mercy of Lord, he was given the post of Manu. Bhagavan Sri Hari gave him the post of Manu. One day, while King Satavrata was performing austerities by offering water on the bank of the river Kritamala, a small fish appeared in the water in his palms. So when he was offering the water, a small fish also came into his palms. Satavrat, the king of Dravradesh, threw the fish into the water of the river along with the water in his palm. O King Parikshit, descendant of Bharat. With an appealing voice, the poor small fish said to King Satavrat, who was very merciful, My dear king, protector of the poor, why are you throwing me in the water of the river where there are other aquatic who can who can kill me. I am very much afraid of them. Because in the water, one fish, they eat other fish in the water, right? So why did you throw me again in the water? Why don't protect me? To please himself, King Satavrata, not knowing that the fish was the Supreme Lord, decided with great pleasure to give the fish protection. The merciful king, being moved by the pitiable words of the fish, placed the fish in a water jug and brought him to his own residence. So he said, so the, the, fish, the fish was growing in the pot. Then he said, I do not like living, living in this water pot with such great difficulty. Therefore, please find me some better reservoir of water where I can live comfortably. So in one night, that fish grew so much that he could not move his body comfortably. Then taking the fish out of the water pot, king threw him in a large well. But within a moment, the fish developed to the length of three cubits. So the fish then said, My dear king, this reservoir of water is not fit for my happy residence. Please give me a more extensive pool of water, for I have taken shelter of you. So the king took the fish from the well and threw him in a lake. But the fish 
the, the fish then assumed a gigantic form exceeding the extent of the water. So where, where to keep first in a water pot, but he was growing, then he put him in the, in the well, but even in the well very quickly he grew, so Prabhu, okay, so he put him in a, in a lake and very quickly also he also grew. So the fish told, O oh king, I am a large aquatic and this water is not also suitable for me. Now kindly find some way to save me. It would be better to put me in the water of a lake that will never reduce. When thus requested, King Satavrata took the fish to the largest reservoir of water. But then, but when that also proved insufficient, the king at last threw the gigantic fish into the ocean. The mic of the Hindi broadcast has disconnected. Mic of the Hindi broadcast has been disconnected in the Facebook. So in the end he put the fish in the ocean. Because even the lake was not enough for him. And then he put him in the ocean. Then after being thrown in the ocean, he told, Oh my Lord, but there are so many living beings in the ocean. It's not a proper place for me. Somebody will eat me. It's very dangerous. 24. You should not throw me in the place. After hearing the sweet words from the God in the form of a fish, the king, being bewildered, asked him, Who are you, sir? You simply be bewilder us. My Lord, in one day you have expanded yourself for hundreds of miles, covering the water of the river and the ocean. Before this I had never seen or heard of such an aquatic animal. My Lord, you are certainly the inexhaustible Supreme God, Narayana Shihari. It is to show your mercy to the living entities that you have now assumed the form of an aquatic. Bhagavan told so after some days all the three worlds will be flooded this is Kandapralaya partial, partial destruction so 
So the three worlds will submerge in the water after seven days. So in this moment, a big boat will come. Then you, a in the company of all the rishis, you will come into, and also all the herbs and everything, you will come in this boat. So after the time in the time of Mahapralai, there will be so much water everywhere. So he put all the seeds in the boat in this moment. There will be a great storm in the time of the Mahapralai. So your boat will be like moving a lot. The boat will be tossed about by the powerful winds. Then, so the Matsya Avatar, so Bhagavan is saying, I will stay in the ocean in the form of a Matsya Avatar. So I'll have like a, like a, like a sing, like a, like a horn or something. So you bind that rope in my. Like what is it? A thorn? Um, a horn or what is it? Sing. Ah, okay, thirty-seven. Pulling the boat, a fin, a fin, think. Pulling the boat with with you and all the rishis, O King, I shall travel in the water of devastation until the night of Lord Brahma's slumber is over. Then, as the boat is the boat is tossed about. Attached the vessel to my horn by means of the great serpent Vasuki, for I shall be present by your side. You will be thoroughly advised and favored by me, and because of your inquiries. So nobody can know Lord without his mercy. Verse 38. Brahma Stuti explains, Brahma Ji explains. Oh Prabhu, without your mercy, nobody can know you without your mercy. So all appear in your hearts. Matsya Devi is telling this king. I'll appear in your heart. And in this way you'll be able to really know about me. After thus instructing the king, the Supreme Lord immediately disappeared. Then King Satavrata began to wait for that time of which the Lord had instructed. So after spreading Kusha with, with its tips pointing east, the saintly king himself facing the northeast sat down on the grass and began to meditate upon supreme, the supreme god Vishnu 
who had assumed the form of a fish. Thereafter, gigantic clouds pouring incessant water swelled the ocean more and more. Thus, the ocean began, began overflow onto the land and inundate the entire world. Have you seen how the flood of the Ganges is the maybe 10, 15 feet, feet of flood in the Ganges? Floods and like drowns everything and so strong the current and floods everything. Maybe other floods they are like slowly growing like growing the 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 tides but in the ganges like at once 15 feet very quickly so high the water sushkadev goswami saying him maharaj parikit usi prakar sang bhagwan so in his way saying bhagwan He flooded everything in this Mahapralaya time. And all the jivas, according to their karma, in a subtle form, they entered Karanada Kashai Vishnu. Those jivas who are seeing Lord and performing prayers, then Bhagavan releases them. or delivers them. Fifty, as a blind man, being unable to see, accepts another blind man as his leader. People who do not know the goal of life accept someone as a guru who is a rascal and a fool. But we are interested in self-realization, therefore we accept you the Supreme God as our spiritual master, for you are able to see in all directions and are omniscient like the sun. A materialistic so-called guru instructs his materialistic disciples about economic development and sense gratification. And because of such instructions, the foolish disciples, so the material, like gurus, material teachers, they give to the disciples' followers dharma, artha, come. And by the three things, Dharma, Artha, Kam, actually our heart becomes contaminated by ignorance. It's covered by ignorance. But, O Prabhu, your Lordship gives knowledge that is eternal and the intelligent person receiving such knowledge is quickly situated in his original constitutional position. So by the sunlight of the sunlight, all the ignorance, the darkness of ignorance is destroyed. So 
और कामना की पूर्ति करने वाली विश्व सिद्धि स्वरूप है जिसका चित्त my lord you are the supreme well wishing friend of everyone the dear most friend the controller the super soul but although you are within the heart the foolish because of lust desires in the heart cannot understand cannot understand you so that person cannot know you O Lord, for self-realization I surrender unto you who are worshipped by the demigods as the supreme controller of everything by your instructions exposing life's purpose kindly cut the knot from the core of my heart and let me know the destination of my life. So who is praying like this? Satya Vrata Muni. He is praying to Matsya Avatar. Shukadeva Goswami continued, 54. When Satya Vrata had thus prayed to the Supreme God, who had assumed the form of a fish, the Lord, while moving in the water of inundation, explained to him the absolute truth. The Supreme Personality of Godhead thus explained to King Satavrata the spiritual science <laughs> sorry, known as Sankhya Yoga, the science by which one distinguishes between matter and spirit. In other words, Bhakti Yoga, along with the instructions, instructions contained in the Puranas, the old histories and the Samhitas. You know the Matsa Puran? Fifty-six. While sitting in the boat, King Satavrata, accompanied in the, by the, in the company of great saintly pers persons, listened to the instructions of the Supreme God in regard to self-realization. These instructions were all from the eternal Vedic literature, Brahma. Thus, the king and sages had no doubt about the absolute truth. At the end of the last inundation, during the period of Swayambhuv Manu, the Supreme God killed the demon named Hayagriv and delivered all the Vedic literatures. So the Lord Brahma, when Lord Brahma awakened from sleeping. So after Matsya Avatar, Bhagavan appeared as Hayagriv. She had killed the demon Hayagriv. So which kalp is going on now? By Basat. Of the Manu, by Basat. Manu. So 58, King Satavrata was illuminated with all Vedic knowledge by the mercy of Lord Vishnu. And in this period he has now taken birth as by Basat Manu, the son of the sun god. Did you understand something? So now we're speaking about what? So now we're going, now it's happening the Viva Swat Mamvantar, the time now, period. So if we listen to this Matsya Avatar Kata, we are free from all the sins are destroyed, all the sins. One who narrates this description of the Mats incarnation and King Satavrata will certainly have all his ambitions fulfilled and he, he will undoubtedly, re, undoubtedly return home back to Godhead. So every day we must listen to this Matsya Avatar Kata. 
So in the Matzah Vatal Bhagavan killed Haya Griv. Do you know Haya Griv? So he was like a horse. So the Haya Griv demon. I offer my respect for obeisances. To God, who pretended to be a gigantic fish, who restored, restored the Vedic liter literature to Lord Brahma when Lord Brahma awakened from sleep. So this Hagrid demon came when Brahma was went to sleep. And Hayagriva, he stole the Vedas. So Bhagavan killed this demon, Hayagriva. And again, give back the Vedas to Hayagriva, to Brahma, sorry, to Brahma. And he also gave the instructions of Matsya Purana. So I perform my I do my obeisance to Bhagavan, Mat Shri Hari Matsya. So, eight canto finish. Now we enter nine canto. Tomorrow we'll read the nine nine canto. Very nice. Arrange the arati.